Okay, so this is how I do this. This is a half terabyte micro SD card, I guess they call it. And I put it in this little contraption here that has my hardwired internet connection and has my mouse. And this laptop has this latest USB port. And I don't leave it up here on the desk because this laptop generates a lot of heat. So I put this in here and it doesn't come up. So what I have to do is pull this out and push it back in and there it is. This uh, SDX half terabyte I'm in the view called content, this PC, and I can see my solid state drives there. And I have this solid state drive here, which I'll be referring to in a minute, but I'm going to switch to Camtasia and I won't be able to show that so you'll just have to remember that that's there and those are there and that's what I'm talking about and after a while we'll go down there and do some things on the AWS Amazon Web Services switching now to Camtasia this is the recorder there we go I'm going to record now we're recording I'm going to drag this down. Here's this half terabyte micro card. And here's my other, there's the blue one that sits to the right and these three sit behind the laptop. This is a terabyte, a terabyte, okay. Let's look at how fast I use up this space. In this black T7, there is one, there's about 15 files. If I look at one like this Cornus job, ah, here we go. We can see if we hover over it. This is 260 gigabytes. And it took about three weeks to do that job. So that's about the rate that I use is 100 gigabytes per week. That's probably a maximum. And again, I'm shooting in 1080p, which is one fourth of the size of 4K. If I take the figure of 100 gigabytes per week maximum, it will take 10 weeks to use a terabyte. And see these that have the number one behind them? Those have been stored on Amazon Web Services. So these are fairly big files and a lot of work went into them and I don't want to lose them. Some of these are still in progress. So I'll load up clips to these later on. Now I have a Phantom 4 shooting 4K, but I don't use it that much. So we'll take a figure of 100 gigabytes per week, quarter of a terabyte a month. Now I'm going to open Bridge. This I'm looking at with File Explorer. So now in Bridge. And so here's this half terabyte micro card that I just plugged in. And we'll look at what's on that. DCIM GoPro. It does this strange blinking thing. See that? And I think this is a bug. How I work around this is I go back into the file explorer, go into that folder. And here's those those files and I don't need these 
dot lrv files. So I delete those. And I don't need these thumb files. So I delete those. Now I'm just left with the MP4 files that in this that GoPro generated because that's where the micro SD card came from. Now I'll exit out of the file folder and I'm back in bridge and here's those clips. This is what I do with these. This one, and I'll hit the control key, and this one is about how iPad Pro touch feature just doesn't work sometimes. So I'm going to make a video complaining about this. So here's these two, and you notice these way GoPro labels these. Well, we're going to do something about that. So we'll go in tools, and we're going to batch rename them. I have this batch rename set or saved as a preset. So you can go in here, there's the default, and use the one that's called year time modified. So I set this all up, then I saved it under this name. And what this preset does is it moves everything that I just selected into another folder. So here's the current file name down here. And this is going to be the new file name. And it gets that new file name by this, the way this is set up right here. So you can add and subtract all kinds of things in here. This is the date time. Date created, year, month, day. Then I have a text, right? You can add lines, plus, minus, you can add more of these. And that has an underscore, or you can put it, put a dash. Text. Let's change it to a dash. That would be a dash. And then another date time, date created, but hour, minutes, and seconds. And the current file name is saved. So this can always be looked up if one needs to. This is what's going to happen is when I click on this rename, these two files that are highlighted will be moved to this folder. I need to make another folder. I don't want it to go in Premier Camtasia use. And it turns out that I just don't happen to have a folder. I don't have that project name. I don't use these. These are construction jobs. So this is more of like generic things. And I could put it in any one of these, but let's name it iPad Pro not working. Select that folder. Okay, it says it doesn't exist. Well, we're going to make a new folder then. There it is. Select that folder. Now, those two files are going to be moved into F, iPad Pro not working, and their names are going to be changed. That's the current file name, the new file name, two will be processed, rename. So this is, can take a long time if there's a bunch of files in here. So they're gone from that card and they are in There it is. There they are. What I will do is use these in Premiere Pro. I'll point Premiere Pro 
to its directory. And then it will save its autosave files, its working files, everything it does, everything Premiere Pro does is going to be in here. And I've never noticed it to be slow based on file transfer. So I keep it on the solid state drive. I could move it into the C drive process it and then move the file somewhere else. I could also have this, the different asset files in different places and the backup files in the different places, but I keep everything in the same place. I have using Camtasia with Premiere Pro. It's presented in a different way. In this file, I have everything relevant to this Premiere Pro Camtasia use. There's Adobe Premiere Pro autosave files. Camtasia, I had it use this directory, so this belongs to Camtasia, this belongs to Camtasia. Here's a note to me that says this project is not finished. Here's the project file in Premiere Pro. Some screenshots. There are some sequences that I exported and already uploaded to YouTube. Those are the ones here that are in MP4. Once that's done, let's back up a minute. This is a bunch of screen captures that I don't have to worry about disappearing. So this does not have a one behind it. In the few days that I use this, it will be gone. I don't have a need to put it in a deep archive storage. But these clips, this is a, a research project on Amazon Web Services. I put all these clips and still shots. I just didn't want to do the work over should something happen. So this has been uploaded to Amazon Web Services and it happens to be about Amazon Web Services. So it coincidentally has the same name. Now there's other parts to this project and they have not been uploaded yet. So there's not a one behind it. Then when I'm done, I'll delete this, delete this. The only thing will be left is on YouTube. If I want to do something more, I'll download it from YouTube and work on it. Here's things that I've already uploaded to YouTube and they aren't taking up much space. So when things get a little tighter, this whole file folder, I'll take a look at these projects and throw them away. Once they're on YouTube. So the next step is what happens when I, when, this is a project, how to use Camtasia. I use Camtasia before Premiere Pro. How I do it, step by step. And when I get done with this, which will be shortly, all of these will just be trashed. And it never made it to deep archive. So then this will be next. When I'm done with this, this will also be trashed. Now, I think the next thing to look at is the part where I upload it to Amazon Web Services. It's a little bit tricky. Some things that are on YouTube that there's some things that just don't work about it, and I will go over those things.